Just getting these alerts off. Very good, very good. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it is Wednesday, one of my favorite days of the week. A lot of people like it because I think it's like hump day. I think it's an old phrase. I don't think anybody even says that anymore. But anyways, good, good morning, everyone. Today is Wealth Wellness Wednesday. This is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, live with two... Sisters, hey, it's Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. And I just ooh, noticed that I'm having a really bad hair day. And yes, I'll be getting my hair done at some point after my trips back and forth to Philly. But, anyways, I want to share, you know, I'm a history buff. I'm kind of a nerd with all that stuff. And I want to share this day in history on March 30th, 1981. It is the 41st anniversary. Uh, when President Reagan um, was shot. Wow. 41 years. 41 years ago. Wow, that's unbelievable. Well, today's also totally flip on that into a positive and a happy. Today is a very, very special day for mm -hmm. uh, a man that I adore and love and part of our family. Uh, and we want to wish Uncle John a happy, 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 happy 80th birthday. Today's his 80th birthday. Uh, we're going to surprise him with some some showering of gifts throughout the day since uh, we're, we can't be there and we'll celebrate when we come up in the, uh, next month or actually two months from now. <clears throat> but, you know, he, um, you know, he's just been, uh, he's a, fu he's a funny guy. He's got a funny sense of humor. Uh, very, you know, very diehard Democrat. Uh, and, you know, we, we've gone uh, through a few little uh uh, sparring matches on on government, but we make sure we try to wind it down at the appropriate time to not let it get too crazy out of hand. But you know, he's smart, intelligent, um, took such great care of Aunt Pat, and we love him to death. And you know, uh, his great great grand niece and nephews, and uh, he's he's has some some grandchildren and great grandchildren, you know, that just absolutely adore him. So we want to wish. Uncle John, a happy, happy, happy 80th birthday. birthday. Yeah, well, I mean, what a milestone, 80 years. And That's he says, I, I talked to him the other day, actually, I called him this morning, but I talked to him the other day, and, and he says, like, in a blink of an eye, you just wait. I go, thanks, Uncle John. <laughs> oh, I mean, we, we always say that once you reach a certain age, and actually, when we talk about that, I've actually had a couple uh, friends, viewers, and listeners say, well, what, what was that moment where you really felt like, life all of a sudden started to go by fast. And I said, it happened to be, when I first started noticing that feeling was when the kids, we had moved from New Hampshire to Charlton. So they were, you know, in school, um, you know, they were in, definitely in grade school when I started to feel that. And it's probably right around the time where I started noticing that malls and stores we're really fast forwarding the holidays. And, you know, you notice it little by little, but then all of a sudden there was just like, oh my God, we're not even, we're not even um, fully through fall and all, all of a sudden there's Christmas stuff coming out. And that's about around, around the time that I noticed. And I kind of coined that phrase. Usually when October 31st hits, which is Halloween, in a blink of a lot, in a blink of an eye, it's no, it's January 1st. Like the, that that time frame, uh, which is a, is equivalent to you know a little over eight weeks, just goes by in a heartbeat, and that's when I kind of started to feel like the years are going by quicker uh, than I expected. And when you're younger, you know, when you're in school and you're young and you're a child, you're waiting for that summer and that warm weather, and it just seems like it's dragging. Or you're waiting for those holidays, it's dragging. All of a sudden, you become this adult and you have children, and you realize how quickly time does go by. So I think that's what Uncle John was trying to tell me in his, in, his, in his own personal way. Yeah, and obviously what's fast approaching for me is my 60th birthday, um, a little less than two months. But what I've noticed, I think as far as you know, time going faster, I think it was right around my 30th birthday because Ryan was about five or was going to be five, whatever, he, he was little. And I thought, wow, I'm 30 years old and my son is five years old. And like, what happened in five years? And now, you know, this, I'm going to be 60 
in May, Ryan's mm -hmm. going to be 35 in August. So it's like, wow. In fact, we have a lot of momentous years, you know, coming yeah. up and it, it just, you know, it just makes you realize. So I would say if someone was to ask me, we'll have to, you know, ask our viewers or our listeners, <clears throat> you know, when did you start noticing or do you even notice it? I would probably say guessing my age based on the kid's age. I was probably in my mid thirties. So I think usually that's the time frame that you start to realize um, because you see your, your babies all of a sudden now are in school and, and the right of going into school. And then you realize how many years were in between, which weren't a lot of years, but they just went by so quick. It wasn't that, oh my God, I went through 30 years and now I'm trying to remember what the child was that, you know, being a baby. It's you saw that child as an infant and it's only been about four or five years and now they're in school. But those four or five years went in a blink of an eye. And I think that's when it starts to nibble at you. Um, but again, even with the nibbling of noticing, I don't think you fully appreciate it until you reach even old, an older age when you, you understand the importance of wealth, um, wealth um, being that if you make more money, um, what you can do with money is impact causes that are important to you or help people in need but also our wellness, you know, for longevity, that we have to have a healthy relationship with money. We have to have, have a healthy relationship with ourselves and understanding that time is precious. We're not promised time. We don't know when our expiration date is, is going to occur. And that's the beauty of, you know, living our lives and living each day to the fullest and not taking for granted and wasting time on wasted energy. And, and I'm gonna, that's going to segue into a lot of things that have been that that impact our health and our well wellness and we often talk jan and i often talk about this uh, about the the powers that be where they can really improve impact and are powerful is social media right we know that social media is a great tool to connect with people that maybe that you don't see every day or that you haven't even seen for years uh it's a great way for family uh to keep in, you know in connection with what's going on with each other's lives family and friends your community sharing pictures sharing information news uh comedy wh whatever it may be um but there's a there, for every powerful positive force there's also a very powerful negative force and what we've been seeing, and it's it's been probably going on for a, a while, is people have eliminated conversation in person or, or talking and spending quality time because time does go by so quickly that they choose to, to take out their debating or whatever you want to call it behind a keyboard. And you use a powerful piece, a powerful tool of time when you do that. Because like Jan always talks about, you know, looking at your phone, right? And finding out how many times you've been scrolling, the minutes that you've spent. And could you have used that time more wisely? What do you say to that, Jan? Well, using our time more wisely has always been, um, you know, even before social media but the fact that we have a, a digital device um everywhere we go and of course you know that has brought up artificial artificial intelligence which i won't get into right at the moment but you know think of for instance i have my books i have desk books and you know I, i'm not going to say that i my um digital eyes wander like oh look at that notice or look at that ad come up you know let me look at that real quick and then you get sucked into that vortex so <clears throat> i've made it a clear habit for myself to set boundaries from this time to this time i am doing this particular work um every hour i get up take five minutes and i'm you know exercising or doing something um you know, every now and then, like I said, I do pick up my device. I, you know, it's unfortunately a natural habit, but I, I control that. So there's so many different ways to look at it. And, and all I have to say is, you know, if you feel that you have to be the keyboard philosopher and comment on emotions versus the truth like there's always there's always a stepping ground to be 
misunderstood. That's why <clears throat> as much as I want to respond to something, and I have it here and there, um, I don't because it's not, in the end, it's just not worth my energy. Right, because I mean, time, time is so short and, and we know that with uh, typing a message or, or typing a response to something on social media, you do not hear the person's inflection. You don't, you don't hear their passion. You don't hear their voice. You don't see their body language. And sadly, the, the downside of social media is that many people use their opinions and express them as if they were actually true facts. And there's a difference, we, you know, we all have opinions, we all have biases, uh, but own them. You know, if you're going to come out and make a comment, it is my opinion, it is my belief. Your belief is yours, you own it. Your opinion is yours, you own it. But it doesn't make it fact. And I think too many people get sucked into on social media, responding to opinions and beliefs rather than actual facts. So you have to be very careful. And it's, it's you know, uh, especially where, you know, your name is out there. Uh, we have, you know, people that are running for uh, different um, campaigns that are going out there. And we're going to see a lot of this coming up as we approach November. And sadly, people uh, kind of get sucked into that. And part of it is the fear of being left out, number one. That's why people comment. They, they have the fear that they're not taking part in whatever debate or conversation, right? Um, but the other, the, other, the, the other piece to it is they're not commenting with facts, with references. Now, sometimes what they will do, uh, and I've noticed a lot of this more lately, um, where you know a group of people, they don't like labels. I don't think anybody likes labels that I know of, you know, sometimes a label, you, you have to own it. But anyway, if someone says, you know, their opinion or even states a fact, the automatic response is, oh, did you get that from blankety blank news or you're a left winger, you're a right winger, instead of saying, you know, I'm an American, uh, that's what I am. And this is, you know, th this is what I've read. Um, I, I'm open-minded to hear this media's opinion. Um, and if there's are actual references that I can go look up to discover whether this is factual or not, that's on me. Um, but to automatically assume because someone has a different belief or a different opinion, and instead of saying, oh, I didn't look at it from that way, or now I understand where you're coming from, and then asking maybe a factual question to see whether it's fact or not, you throw them under the bus right away. Oh, you're, you know, you're this, you, you follow this news network. So it's whatever. So you're not really having a healthy discussion anyways. So I say, again, time goes by too quickly. Why waste your energy and time? If you're sharing, uh, you know, that you're sharing your, your campaign platform, of course you want to get out, that, out there. Um, you know, make sure that it is, is backed by facts. And or these are the things that I notice. I can do it in a bullet point. Bullet point to me is probably the easiest way to get a message out there. Um, you know, th this is based on a fact. This bullet point is what I know to be true that has been going on. I would like to change it for the following reasons. You know, there's a rhyme to a reason to do that without getting into that kind of debate. And so, you know, I, I hope people are, are first and foremost kinder on social media, stop jumping on the gun and jumping on people, that solves nothing, you know? And it's okay, like I said, it's okay to debate, it's okay to have that conversation. But if you're debating someone's opinions or beliefs, what is the point? Because they, they own them, they're theirs. And guess what? Debating on social media is not gonna change somebody's mind. I mean, it's not. What's gonna change someone's mind is factual information that's going to impact their 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 reason for whatever their issue or what they want resolved within a certain situation is going to be. Yeah, and the the other thing that brings to mind as far as that goes, um, and I'm going to keep try to keep it as generalized. I think people are going to understand exactly what I'm talking about, sure. and you'll understand when I start. So, three people are up on a stage. They make reference to, and now 
the viewership we know has dropped dramatically, but they made, made reference to a certain bill that was just passed in Florida, oh, referencing yeah. a certain word that's not even in the, the bill. What I have a problem with are those three people who that is their opinion, yet all these people watching them say, are under the impression, oh my God, I can't believe that, you know, the governor of the state of Florida would sign such a bill when the word that they are referencing and everybody's clapping about after they did their little stint is not even in the bill. That's the problem with the social media. It yeah, is and funny, very funny, I'm gonna interject. I'm gonna interject for a second and then go right back to what you were saying. Funny that you mentioned that. I was out to dinner last night with uh, two other couples, great couples, we always have lots of laughs. And that subject matter did come up. And one of them said, well, you know, they shouldn't have put that, they shouldn't have said, what is the line? Um, well, I can't, what's the exact, something gay, I don't know what it was. Uh, is something about, uh, don't say, don't, don't say, don't say gay, Bill. Yeah, exactly. So, and I looked and I said, you realize that's not in the bill? And she said, no, it is in the bill. Mm -hmm. like, it's it's not in the bill read the bill and you know she she didn't know so that's the point is people get sucked into but not doing their due diligence to actually read the bill if you read the bill you would absolutely know that it's not in there so and that was never the intent that was it has to do with you know uh what ideologies are being brought to the classroom and he's putting a squash on that and rightfully so I don't understand, and, and there, that is support from both ends. Um, there are a lot of Democrats that don't like uh, politicizing children. There are a lot of Republicans, there's a lot of independents that don't like politicizing children. And that's the point of the bill. It's nothing to do with the other, um, but you get a few people that, you know, it's almost like, uh, what's that thing, uh, calling fire, you know, in a crowded room. Right. Uh, you can't do that, but they, certainly get away with doing it and people get sucked into, into believing. So sorry, I had to interject that. No, that's okay. But you know, and the moronic part of that was when they showed the audience and certain, you know, stars, like you mm. look like a flipping moron and that's all yeah. the credence that I'm going to give to that shenanigans. I think it's total BS. And, right. you know, to prove my point, obviously you're out with the, with your friends who one person thought, that word was included and it's not people it's not so all i can say is absolutely do your due diligence and go look that bill up you'll see yeah. that it's not in there and actually read it actually read it uh it's something that a lot of people don't bother doing they'll either skim through something and only t uh certain pieces they remember Read the entire bill to understand what the bill is about. And again, stop spreading false information that is not factual. Right. Which social media does all the time. Media well, outlets do it all the time. And sadly, a lot of people are uh, on the uh, curtails of, social, uh, of media outlets doing the same thing, spreading false information. You know, at least identify whether it's your opinion and be postured in your opinion. Don't be wishy-washy if that's, if that's your opinion, that's your belief, stand your ground. Um, but if it's not factual, be prepared for something that's going to bring out the facts and counteract what you're saying. And it's not to like, I told you so, it's more about educate yourself. You know, right. I understand why you believe this. However, if there's facts that disprove what you believe, that should be an, oh, I didn't know that. And it's okay to say, I didn't know that. And so, so, so many people, I think, are so afraid to say, I'm wrong. I didn't know that. Oh my God, how could I not know that? I wish I knew that. Oh, I sound like a buffoon now. You know, use some comedy if you have to, like if you can't make fun of yourself for not knowing something, gotta lighten up people because that's gonna do better for your wealth, wellness Wednesday. That is gonna help you out. That's right. And it just goes to show the type of person that you are, that you have the integrity, you have the audacity to stand on your ground and own it. And as another segue, I just want to mention another thing about that evening, what happened the other night, which I think is um, kind of ironic. A lot of, you know, obviously, I'm not going to give it a lot of credence, but a lot of 
chit chat going on the last few days. But what people don't realize, and here's another thing you need to look up. And I saw and I heard it. Somebody mentioned it and I did my due diligence was a few years ago. Um, the person who was slapped the other night did the exact same thing thing to somebody else, and I could. And, and I, my first thought was another award show at another award show. It was be it was behind stage type of thing, and I heard that, and I'm like, I I I was shocked, and that's why I had to do my due diligence. And indeed, there it was for all to see. So. So, Neither, he, no. so he slapped somebody else because of was it so uh, now i need to know was it a punch or was it a slap <laughs> it was kind of hard to tell but you could tell that something occurred it, it with was, the same like, person or somebody different it was uh the person chris that rock. Slapped, yeah chris rock and who, yeah he was the one doing the slapping yeah but who did they slap or punch um it was some kind of a reporter um well, you know, maybe that's how they hear all their differences. Slap, 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 slap. Well, uh, and, and all I'm saying as far as that goes is, you know, we know that violence is never the answer. No, of course not. What does that solve? It, it doesn't solve anything. Well, what it did do, and a lot of people, again, the minions that, you know, and I even, I even shared my piece to it, um, meaning not more or less from a, a, a different perspective. Um, because really the person that should be highlighted was Denzel Washington for his, his great advice. And whether the, whether this was an act, a lot of people, you know, that now that that's the next debate or it has been the debate. Did this really happen? Was it an act? Most people think it is. Let's face it. They're actors. Um, they have doubles they, they know how to like, you know, hit slap, uh, avoid, make it look real. So the chances I would say are highly probable highly probable but we don't know but the point being obviously denzel washington's words were real and they were momentous for that occasion for that moment even if that moment was fake and that was the lesson that people should instead of talking about all that they should talk about when you're at your highest moments in life you know, that's when the devil comes out. That's sometimes where a lot of people falter. You know, they, they, they reach that pivotal moment in their career or their profession or personal life. And all of a sudden they get a little too kind of hot for their bridges and something, they do something stupid, say something stupid, do something that is not nice. And that would makes your great moment now turn into a bad moment. Or a uh, or a uh, deciding moment that changes the whole trajectory of why you were up here. They don't remember now why you were up here. They're too focused on why how you fell and how you faltered and and where it could have been prevented. So I think for me that was more about the message that I shared was, you know, be kind to people. And yeah, we don't know whether this was true or not. And and at the end of the day, do we really care? You've got you know people in Ukraine dying. Um, you've got Ukraine's government is just as corrupt as Russian government. We we know we know these countries are corrupt and communist co communists, but there are innocent lives that are uh, the people. You know the, you know that focus. Let's focus on what's going on in our own country. You know people that are struggling, um, and yet we're focused over. The, you know, the Oscars. So you would have to say, hmm, who benefited from all of this? Did the people benefit from this? Or did the, the organization of the Oscars benefit from this? Did the actors' careers benefit from this? Who benefited from that? And when and you don't even have to answer it, you just gotta think about that. And we really was it worth wasting my time and energy over. Right, exactly. So, you know, let, let's go forward, be kind to one another. Exactly. Um, do your due diligence. And speaking of diligence, um, I just got to say this. I was yelling at the TV last night. Oh, no. Usually, Why? usually it's scary. <laughs> <sighs> OK. I got to tell you something. Oh, he was on? 
some speech or something that he gave and he's got to do the the whisper thing like we look like i could really go off but all i just say was i started yelling at the tv what was he whispering about i honestly don't know because you were too focused, one, you were too focused on the whisper if if the leader of the free nation is trying is trying his best to do um, a speech. He should not be whispering because you look like a buffoon. Well, as you know, I don't watch him live. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, once in a while I'll see a, a clip. Again, it's wasted energy, wasted time. Uh, for me, you know, I, I stand by my decision on why I didn't vote for him. And um, by facts, it was a good idea that I didn't vote for him because everything I thought about him, he actually factually proved he's not fit. So right. uh, I consider him a shell in the White House, sadly. Um, by statue of my my citizenship, he is uh, the president, the standing president right now. I mean, a lot of people will debate whether he was voted in, you know, all of that nonsense, which it is at this point nonsense, because if, you know, you can't prove something, you can't prove something, but whatever, you know, everyone has their opinion on that. Regardless, he's still there. And I'm grateful that I didn't vote for him. Very grateful that I did not vote for him. And I stand by why I didn't vote for him. Because the reasons why I didn't vote for him is exactly what's going on right now. Yeah. So he proved he proved my point. I didn't yeah. have to prove it. He proved my point. Exactly. And there was also a video clip, and I believe I saw it on Rumble, of um, <laughs> some reporter got a, <laughs> a snapshot of his talking points and it said you know talking points for blah 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 and he wasn't even following it which was just i had to laugh you had to laugh and so he, he got a picture of his notes yeah because he was that he had to follow while he was in front of the prompter right oh my god well so, okay. anyways that's uh just my two cents for the day so and that's the, well, the power that's the power of a zoom lens <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, on that note, you know, uh, Carol, so I'm going to turn it over to you to do the closeout for Wealth Wellness Wednesday. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0, and I am with two sisters. And this is Carol, so aka Nani Boss Live. I'm going to tell you a quick bit be kind, pay it forward. Wealth Wellness Wednesday is all about having a healthy relationship with money and how you can do that. And it's not about the dollar amount. It's about paying it forward to an unsuspecting person. So that does not mean donate to your favorite charity. Still do that, of course. Uh, help out people that you know or need. Still do that, of course. But this is actually a financial exchange with someone that you don't know. You want to surprise them. Uh, you don't have to stick around for them. You just have to try to imagine how they would feel. How would you feel if you opened up a box of chips you know you know they have the box with the little little chips and all of a sudden you opened up and you saw a five dollar bill on there you feel pretty cool right how about if you were in line uh at a dunkin donuts uh or starbucks i'm not a coffee fan everyone knows that however you go up you're in your you're in your car and you drive up you put your order in and and the person says oh your your order's taken care of the person ahead of you uh gave a credit to to pay for a few cars behind you you would feel like, oh my goodness, wow. So you, it's all about making people feel good, pay kindness forward so that you do the same. And gosh, let's think about that. We could be a domino effect of kindness and goodness, paying it forward, which guess what? Increases those really good endorphins, makes you feel good, makes the person that receives it feel good. And you never know, you may just help somebody who you know had to get that extra gallon of gas and Needed an extra five bucks. Again, it's not about the dollar amount. It could be a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you want, whatever you think you want to give. Um, but surprise somebody today. We love hearing the different stories of different surprise ways that people do that. And with that, this is Carol Sue, aka Naughty Boss Live with two sisters. We wish you a great Wealth Wellness Wednesday. And we will see you tomorrow night for Thursday. What's trending? There's so much stuff already trending that we've kind of intertwined all week. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.